What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel, uh, WRX Garage. We are back again with another awesome video for you this week. Today, you guys are gonna notice I have my, uh, my hood open. What am I doing today? Well, let's show you. Today, I got a package in from none other than Rally Sport Direct, and I am super excited. Let's get it unboxed. All right guys, so for those of you who are <laughs> reading the title of the video before you click on it, you already know what I'm gonna be doing today. This box came in from Rally Sport, Crawford. I also have this little box here, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. So, I ordered the Crawford V3 AOS air oil separator. Super clean, super easy to use, and it's pretty darn seamless. Um, the reason why, and this is going to be a big discussion that I'm going to be talking about throughout the video, um, there's a very specific reason why I went with this model versus um, any other AOSs that are on the market, but let's take a second to actually talk about air oil, air oil separators and why they're even needed for these cars. So you hear the term air oil separator thrown around a lot on the forums, you know, see, you see them in videos, you see them on the product pages for websites from Subi Speed and Import Image Racing and Rally Sport. What exactly is an air oil separator? Well, it separates air and oil. On these cars, because of the way that the boxer engine is set up, we have a lot of oil being returned back into our intake system because of the stock Subaru PCV system. So essentially you have a line coming back off the, the back of the uh, crankcase to help vent pressure. Uh, and that, that air that's being vented out, that's high pressure air, uh, high temperature, it has little oil particles from the oil squirters and you know, all the stuff going on in the crankcase moving high temperature, high heat, high pressure. And so all these oil particles are then being fed back into your intake system. On normal injection engines, so non-direct injection engines, this is not really that much of an issue. Because when, if you can imagine, if you have the air coming in and the fuel coming in all at the same time, the oil particles get mixed in with the, the fuel and you don't really have too many issues with carbon buildup on the valves themselves. On a direct injection model, because we don't have any fuel being squirted onto the top or touching the top of our valves, our intake valves, carbon buildup on those can be pretty extreme and they can get pretty bad pretty quickly. So when we're installing an AOS, we're doing a bunch of different things all at once to help improve the car. First, we're reducing the amount of oil that's going into the cylinders uh, through the intake, which means we have a higher octane rating, better performance and better reliability. Two, we're reducing amount, the amount of carbon buildup on the tops of the valves from those oil particles. And three, which I care about because I'm an environmentalist, I'm actually re <laughs> reducing the amount of burnt oil coming out the back of the car, which helps with air emissions, helps with carbon emissions throughout the year. It's a pretty small amount, but it is pretty significant if you think about how much oil is burned off versus how much isn't as you go down the line. So on that same subject, might as well talk to you guys about what's in this box. This is the Perrin Turbo Sump uh, Restrictor Pill. Turbo Sump Restrictor Valve. It's just this, uh, this little valve here. You guys have seen it. It's 30 bucks. I figured while I'm down in the car, I might as well put this in there. Um, this actually helps with reducing the amount of oil leaking past the, the seals within the turbo. Um, yeah, if you had a pair in AOS, there's actually a port to add onto it, but uh, we'll worry about this a little bit later. Let's get back onto the AOS. So now that you guys know what an AOS can do and how it can help your car, let's talk about why I went with the Crawford V3 option instead of uh, Perrin, instead of uh, the old Grimspeed one, um, IAG, there's a bunch of them. but. This one right here, the V3, is unique because as you can see, there's only one, two, three, four ports on it. Usually there's six. And the reason this only has four ports is because you have air intake, air release or air return, and then oil in and oil out. I'm gonna get flamed in the comments for that one. I think that's wrong. Oh well. Oil return. I'll figure it out. 
But this, anyway, <laughs> this uh, model does not require any coolant. So uh, compared to their V3 option, which had six ports, you had to splice into your coolant line and you actually had to replace your uh, PCB system. With this model, you actually retain the stock PCB system. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. So if you have to return back to stock, this is going to make it a lot easier. And two, I, I only have to splice into a certain amount of lines. I don't have to splice into um, any of my coolant lines. I don't have to worry about anything dripping or messing around at the engine. It's just safer. This uses the ambient air temperature of your engine bay to slowly warm up and it actually helps reduce the amount of uh, moisture buildup within these, which some people say is a big issue on some of the other models. So um, that's why I went with the Crawford V3. Uh, let's get pretty much into it. It's, uh, it's a little complicated. It's not that bad. Um, it's just a lot of uh, plug and play. Um, so yeah, let's get started taking off the things you need to take off. Uh, yeah. So guys, uh, one thing that's I'm a little annoyed by was that my my uh, box installation uh, box did not come with the installation instructions. So I've been having to uh, refer to them from my phone, which is on their website. And their website has a great page, all for it's a, they have an entire Crawford's website has an entire page on their website. Um, dedicated to installation and guides and instructions. So they have a link to their videos, a link to the PDF themselves. I just wish, come on, just print it out and give it to me. I don't, I don't wanna have to check my phone every single time. And I mean, it's a pretty straightforward installation, but I have a wonderful habit of taking two hour installations and making them last four or five. So we'll see how this goes. But uh, hey Crawford, if you're hearing this, just, just give it to us, please. It might just be missing from my box, I don't know. But anyways.
pretty easy. So one thing that the instructions is kind of weird on is that the, the quick disconnect uh, that you saw in the images on, or I, I saw in the images, um, I don't have on my car. So maybe that's a 17 plus thing or a, a year 15 only thing. I don't know but I don't have those quick connects. But I think at the end of the day, it's actually gonna make my install easier. So I'm just gonna be putting a hose down onto it and then putting a ring clamp on it. So I'm not too concerned and not too worried about that. Okay guys, quick update. Uh, that took way longer than it needed to because basically um, it's really difficult to reach down into the spot I'm about to show you um, because of the uh, radiator fan is in the way. Um, and it took me a long time to get the radiator fan uh, power clip harness out because it's just such a tight little angle. I can't get under it. it took me a long time, but the, uh, the main vent hose is now attached back to the intake side. Um, I'll show you guys now. So right down here, right where my hand is, this finger, right down in there. Right here, this hose comes up, comes out here, and back to our AOS. So just for tidiness, gonna zip tie these back on and then we're on to the last two hoses in the in the back there. So last thing I have to do here is there's a, a PCV hose that connects this little L right uh, right back here where my hand is. Um, so the last thing I gotta do is just take the two clamps off, pull that off, and then we're gonna run one line to one side, one line to the other. So pretty simple. Um, it's just a little awkward to get back there. I'm gonna try to show you guys real quick what I'm showing you now. Right here is one end. So I'm gonna take that little clip off. The other, right over here. That was uh, that was the hardest thing I have ever done on this car. Harder than getting the downpipe bolts out, 
bolts out. Huh. The tolerance on the half inch pipe from Crawford. Crawford, if you're watching this, you guys make a great kit, but you gotta check the IDs on that. That was, I had to go in and stretch it out with a, uh, the back of a half inch ratchet with the back of a wrench to stretch out the tube enough so where I can even get it on there. So I don't know what you guys did. I use grease, I use lube, everything. I don't know what they did, but it took me quite a bit of effort. When I say quite a bit, I mean it was almost impossible. I almost gave up. It was that bad, so. Um, yeah. Other than that, honestly, these couple pipes here, the rest of the kit is really not that bad to install. So that's all set. Uh, last thing to do guys is just reassemble everything. I'll just do a quick time lapse of that and then I'll give you guys my final impressions on the kit and we'll do the startup to make sure that everything is good to go. First start. Oh, let's see how it goes. Okay guys, so that's it. As you guys can see, the car's running great. Um, I, did, I did turn my AC on just to make sure that the AC compressor is still working. Um, I don't have any check engine lights yet. Cross my fingers. Um, I don't hear any boost leaks. Everything sounds normal and the same and good. Um, I did make sure that all my radiator fans are spinning as well. Um, so that's good. Um, and honestly, it's a pretty clean setup. It doesn't really add a whole lot to what you can see in the engine bay, which is really beneficial. Um, I guess I'll do a quick follow-up uh, a later date to see, um, you know, what the actual results of this AOS are. So maybe we'll do like three or four months later on this AOS, but uh, Crawford, overall, great parts. I w again, I wish you guys threw the instructions in there. Maybe it was just missing from my kit. And then secondly, make sure you guys check the inner diameters of those tubes, the half inch ones, because the ones on the back of my block onto the manifold, it was almost impossible to get on. I am so cut up and scratched from trying to get that on in there. Um, it's just way too tight, so. Okay, so I'm interrupting myself because um, I am about one week later um, after the full installation of this uh, AOS, guys. And um, I realized I was a little salty when I, finish that install because you know how long it took and uh, I was a little frustrated but I just wanted to give you guys one week later um, on this AOS for one the car seems to run a, just a tiny bit smoother and I've actually had reduced knock since then knock events even that that minus 141 and the minus 2.8 um, I haven't had as many of those events since I've had this AOS on and that could be attributed to the slightly colder weather but overall I think this AOS is doing its job. Uh, it's been working seamlessly and I've had no issues at all. Uh, I've driven the car pretty hard on a couple cold nights, a couple warm days, uh, 80s-ish, uh, and then a little bit colder around 50s, 60s, and I've had absolutely no issues. Um, I don't notice that the car takes longer to warm up or anything like that, so that's good. Um, yeah, it's working absolutely wonderfully. And um, Crawford, you guys designed an awesome product. So I'm sorry for being a little salty, but uh, I think I'm over it now. Um, a week later when I can have a little bit more perspective on it. But uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, let us know down in the comments what you guys are running for your AOS or your catch can system. What do you guys think is best? Do you guys think the running this without the coolant lines is good or bad? Uh, yeah, let us know down below. 
Again, if you're not subscribed, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. We have weekly videos coming out every single week. So, um, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. See you next week.